Good afternoon. Here's what we have in the news today. Labor are charged for allegedly stabbing two men in Westmoreland. Daring daylight shooting leaves one dead in Joni Park. Sick man robs guard at hospital. PNP targets key UNDN division. Holness says he doesn't promise he makes commitment. Vendor assistance shot on recreation ground in Joni Park. And Linstead can be charged with almost every sexual offense in the book. 26-year-old Christopher Campbell was charged with wounded with intent in relation to an incident that occurred in Petersfield District, Westmoreland, on January 21st. The laborer, who is of Hatfield District, Savalamar, in the parish, was charged on Tuesday. About 3.30 p.m. on January 21st, an argument reportedly developed between Campbell and two men. During the altercation, Campbell allegedly used a knife to inflict stab wounds to the men's abdomens. The victims were transported to hospital where they were admitted in serious condition. Tragedy struck in St. Andrew yesterday after a brazen gunman murdered a vendor at the Duny Park Recreation Grounds and his assistant injured in broad daylight. The dead man has been identified as LeSean Swaby, a resident of New Haven, Kingston 20. According to police reports, about 9.15 a.m., the deceased man and a woman were at his stall when a lone gunman approached and opened fire, hitting both persons. The incident took place just footsteps away from the Duane Park Police Station. A policeman challenged the gunman, who escaped on a motorcycle. A resident of New Haven said a silent war has been brewing within their community for months and that may have contributed towards the vendor's debt. He stated that from his knowledge, Swaby was not involved in the war, adding that at this time, anyone could have been a target. As far as I know, none of them are involved in anything. It's about a year ago him start sell out there, so. The lady worked with him and she would go out earlier and open and go and sell too little special and juice for him. All of this just sad and sure say anyone can get killed, the resident said. A senior crime fighter of the St. Andrew South Police Division said members of the security forces are maintaining a strong presence within the space. A man from the corporate area has confessed to committing two counts of robbery at the Kingston Public Hospital by posing as a patient in need of medical attention. The man, Michael Webster, stole valuables amounting to 128000 from security guards. During the proceedings at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Wednesday, it was revealed that on January 8 and 29, Webster presented himself as a patient at the hospital, claiming to require medical attention. Despite being directed to the patient care areas, he unlawfully accessed the security guard's room. Webster confessed to stealing a bag containing a cellular phone and personal belongings valued at $100,000 along with another Samsung cellular phone valued at $28,000. It was the security at KPH that catch him about two weeks ago because he would even come on the compound in the security uniform, one complainant informed Chief Parish Judge Chester Crooks. Webster was not allowed by Judge Crooks to give an explanation for his actions. You are going to talk with the probation officers and explain why you did what you did, the judge instructed. Webster was made the subject of fingerprint order and was remanded in custody until May 21st when he is to be sentenced. Are you tired of browsing all over the latest happenings in Jamaica? Discover it right here on Jamaica News online TV YouTube channel. Foreigner home and you want to be in touch with the happenings in Jamaica? Guess what? You are in the right place. 
We bring you reactions to the latest news at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and straight up news at 6 p.m. Ask and you shall receive, guys. So if you are watching this video, like, subscribe, comment, or share, hit that subscribe button. And remember to comment below with your thoughts. Guys, make sure you come back again and again to watch our videos. Remember, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. We are always here to give you... As the local government election draws closer, the opposition People's National Party has underscored its determination to secure a victory this time after 12 years' dry spell. Repeating his mantra since the election campaign started, PNP President Mark Golden told comrades in Marverley in the crucial Hue and Den division that Monday, February 26, will be the beginning of the end for the Jamaica Labour Party led government. Hue and Den is one of the divisions which the Prime Minister must win if it is to take control of the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, which it lost by two divisions in 2016, and Golden presented the party's candidate, Mark King, as a man who will ensure the victory. The PNP hasn't won an election since 2012. Twelve years now, we don't win an election. The last general election the PNP won was in 2011. The last local was 2012. A lot of the problems have been that our own people have not wanted to come out for whatever reasons. COVID and other things, and a lot of those things are solved now. We have a united team. We are out there working. And I, man Mark Jefferson Golden, may I put in a double shift because we want bring home the victory. Time come, he said, to loud cheers and energetic people. Golden, however, reminded comrades that the PNP is depending on them to vote and horse and do the right thing. We don't win this thing until Monday itself, when we get the votes in the box. So I am asking each and everyone to stay very focused and very determined, and we don't celebrate because we don't win it yet. We have to do the work on Monday to make sure that we win it by the end of the day when the votes are counted. In throwing his support behind King Percival, Percival Bryan, PNP, caretaker for St. Andrew Northwestern constituency, in which the UND division lies, said, Without a shadow of a doubt, the people of UND division are ready for marking to be the councillor. But he reminded that their support needs to be translated to votes on election day. Let us take nothing for granted. Let us leave no stones unturned because we know the labor rights are setting for us, but we are setting for them too. So come February 16, I want everybody to come out early and vote for Comrade Mark King. Put your ex beside the head, said Brian. King in a short address, asked supporters to make their party leader proud by ensuring that the PNP wins by a large margin. I don't want us to just win, but I want us to win big. I want us to send a message to the Jamaica Labour Party that time come. And all I am saying when we win this division, Nigel Clark is next. Time come, he said. In the meantime, Golden also used the opportunity to take a jab at the ruling party's leadership governance as he highlighted what he said were the problems in the education system and the health sector and promised to fix the issues as a PNP government. According to Golden, the education system is in crisis as more than 30% of primary school children graduate and cannot read and write or do basic arithmetic. That is the source of many problems later in life, including the crime and violence problem too. We have to get to the foundation of those things. As a PNP government, when we come in and fix those things so we can have a bright future for this generation and generations to come, said Golden. Turning to the health sector, Golden said, they spend the money, yes, or so they claim, but when you take a stock, you go into a public health facility and you need a bed, you need to be admitted, 
You can't get a bed. You have to be sitting on a bench or on the floor or on a wheelchair for days. And many don't survive the indignity. In the last government election in 2016, the JLP's Andrew Harris won the UNDN division by securing 1,534 votes, while the PNP's Ian Telfer received 1,281 votes. Harris is the JLP candidate to defend his seat against King. Encourage them to come out like a united orange force. Prime Minister Andrew Holness asserting that he is aspiring to end absolute poverty in Jamaica says he makes commitments, not promises. Holness, during three of his speeches while on a tour in St. Elizabeth on Wednesday, reiterated the government's list of achievements. During his first address in middle quarters for the handing over of a house, Holness pointed out that more than 200 houses have been built under government's social housing program. We estimate that there are about 6,000 Jamaicans who are in need of some social housing intervention, so it is going to take some time. You can have faith that there is a program. The program is funded. These are not promises. These are commitments. I don't want to go too much into the season, but I am hearing something about making promises. You know, I don't make promises. I make commitments. I am not afraid to speak aspirationally. So it is my aspiration to end absolute poverty in Jamaica, Holness said. A dimension of absolute poverty is when people do not have access to the basic standard of housing. If we could ensure that there is a basic standard of housing in Jamaica, then we would have ended one element of absolute poverty. Does that mean that I shouldn't have the aspiration, that I shouldn't look to a big gold? The difference is, though, is it is 6,000 and more than 200 persons have benefited we have started. There is an institution in place. There's a budget in place. There's a process in place. And it can only get better, he added. At the same time, Holness labeled the opposition People's National Party as the promising party. They make a lot of promises, but they were never able to deliver. And the reason they were not able to deliver when they formed the government, I would never think it's because of any malicious intent. I think that, like all Jamaicans, we want to see good for our people. But if you do not have the economy that provides the budget to make these efforts sustainable, we will not be able to deliver on promises, he said, during the commissioning of a water project in Lacewood Middle Quarters. There the Prime Minister explained his views on the difference between a promise and a commitment. What I try to do is not to make an empty promise. A promise is a wish and there is nothing wrong with wishing good for people. A promise is a good wish but a commitment is slightly different. A commitment is a good wish with the backing of the resources to achieve it. And more than the maker of this good promise, backed by resources, also has a track record of delivery, he said. So one set of people, they make a good wish for you and they are very articulate at doing it. Their rhetoric, their rhetoric alone will get you to believe that it will be done. But the problem is, having reached to this height of expectation, the perception fall off causes deep frustration and resentment. My administration avoids that totally. I am standing here today in fulfillment of a commitment, added wholeness, while pointing to more water projects for the middle quarters area. Wholeness, meanwhile, urged Jamaicans to look at politics objectively. Your political leanings, your perspective may influence how you view the objective statistics, but you can change. I say to Jamaicans, we are in the season where we are battling for the minds of the public, and I too 
am a gladiator in the ring and I am battling for your minds because we have been at this place before where subjective and emotional feelings override logical, reasonable, and objective analysis of our situation, he said at the official opening of the renovated Black River Fire Station. You cannot treat your politics in this emotional and subjective, irritational way. You have to look at your politics objectively. And for the first time, you have a government that can campaign objectively on what we have achieved, added wholeness. Following the ceremonies, the Prime Minister toured section of St. Elizabeth as part of the Jamaica Labour Party campaign for the February 26th local government election. Forty-four-year-old Kirkland Young, otherwise called Carl, a taxi operator of Linstead St. Catherine, has been slapped with several sexual offences charged following a series of incidents that transpired between January 2022 and December 2023. He is expected to appear in the court to answer to the charges of RAPE three counts, conspiracy to RAPE three counts. Exual touching, aiding and abetting RAPE three counts, possession of CHILD, pornography, knowingly causing or inciting involvement of child pornography, conspiracy of grievous SEXUAL assault, trafficking, misprisonment of a felony, and failure to report to the Office of the Children Registry. Reports from the Lynn State Criminal Investigation Branch are that the now complainant was compelled to commit several SEXUAL acts with Young and other men against her will. A report was made to the police and an investigation was launched into the matter. Young was subsequently arrested and charges were laid against him on Tuesday, February 20. Investigations remain ongoing as the police believe that Young is a repeat offender. Meanwhile, the police are appealing to anyone with any information can, that can assist with the investigation to contact the Linstead Police Station. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below.